Hey everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you about all of the poetry collections I have acquired recently. If you spent any amount of time on this channel, you know that I love poetry. I also write poetry and around June, July time I think, I'm going to be published for the first time outside of a university publication and I'm really excited about that. But I haven't actually been writing for quite a while. I think after studying poetry at university and doing a big poetry project, I needed a bit of a, a brain break. But I'm hoping to read a lot more poetry in the next couple of months or so and I hope that that will spur me to get back into it, give me a lot of inspiration. I think one of the most important things you can do as a poet is read other people's poetry. <laughs> but yeah, I have a lot of physical collections to show you and I have a couple of e-arcs that I have been sent as well. But yeah, let's just get into the books. First one I have is You Found a Beating Heart by Nisha Baku. This is published by the Onslaught Press and I don't normally go into a shop and just see a poetry collection and buy it. I normally do quite a bit of research surrounding it before I pick it up but this one the back of it it just completely drew me in so that's I'm gonna read that to you you found a beating heart is Nisha Baku's debut poetry collection she views the heart from an uncanny perspective in these experimental feminist poems so I was sold at that point the rawness of her poetry is achieved largely through a free writing approach which translates emotional excess into something that is both spiky and dreamlike both confessional and elusive and I had a little flick through it and saw some of the titles and I just thought this was something that I was definitely going to enjoy. Next we have some collections from some poets that I already know I love. Um, the first of those is If I Don't Know by Wendy Cope. So I read Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope a couple of years ago and since then I have dipped in and out of her poetry a lot. And Wendy Cope is one of the most brilliant and funny poets that I've come across. A lot of her work that I've read is quite punchy and almost like in your face. Whereas I think this collection, a more lyrical voice is given the chance to develop and that's something I'm really looking forward to trying out. I think some of the poems in this are a lot longer as well and I don't read a lot of long form poetry. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. And this one is of course published by Faber and Faber. Next up is a poet that needs no introduction. I have The Other Country by Carol Ann Duffy. Can we just take a moment to look at how gorgeous this cover is? This is Picador's republication of Caroline Duffy's third collection of poetry and I think it's one of the few collections of hers that I've not yet read. In this collection, Caroline Duffy is taking the reader on a journey that initially seems very everyday and familiar but then flips that on its head. It's blurring the lines between fantasy and reality and it's about self-illusion. It's about re-examining the everyday both experiences and emotions. I have never read a Caroline Duffy collection and not immediately had a writing session afterwards. So I think this might be exactly what I need in my life right now. <laughs> Next up I have two collections by the same poet, one of them I have already read, uh, that is Plum by Holly McNish. This was one of my favourite books of 2017 and I had an ER copy of it, uh, so I really wanted to get my hands on a physical copy. This is also published by Picador and I love this collection so much. This is a juxtaposition of Holly's old poetry, so poetry she wrote when she was a child or when she was a teenager, and it's her responding to that poetry either with just little comments or brand new poems. We see how she develops not only as a poet but as a woman and a person, how her opinions have become more nuanced, and it's a salute to the stumbling and fumbling way in which we grow up. And the next Holly McNish collection I have is Nobody Told Me Poetry and Parenthood. And this one is published by Blackfriars Books. This is a almost like diary collection of poems that Holly wrote in her first few years of parenthood. Parenthood and specifically motherhood is something that fascinates me in my own work. I find societal depictions of motherhood and expectations of motherhood fascinating. I find mothers fascinating. I think they are some of the most incredible kinds of people in the world. <laughs> I think this collection has a lot to do with the things that new parents don't always feel like they can talk about. 
I don't have any intention of becoming a parent anytime soon, um, but I love Holly's poetry. I love her perspective of things. I've heard her read a few of the poems from this before and I thought they were brilliant. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one and it's a nice big chunky poetry collection as well. Next I have five collections from the same publishing house and that is Burning Eye Books. Burning Eye Books are a publishers that I found out about because they publish Megan Beach. They publish her collection You Sad Feminist, which again was one of my favourite books of last year. They publish a lot of really um, punchy poetry collections, often to do with um, politics and class and sexism and feminism and race. And on International Women's Day, they had 50% off discounts on all of their female poets. So I got this, this little stack of five. The first collection I have is A Recipe for Sorcery by Vanessa Kisul. I saw this on uh, Liv Hooper's channel from the Book Nook, who is a totally underrated booktuber and I will leave her channel linked down below, I think she's fantastic. Uh, but she recommended this collection, um, I didn't realise it was published by Burning Eye at the time, um, of me like adding it to my wish list. so when I saw it in the 50% off sale I was like yes please and give it to me. There's a quote from Holly McNish on the back that says she is the main poet I read and think I wish I had written that which is um, an excellent testimonial. <laughs> this has been described to me as a recipe for personhood and it is a redefinition of what it is to be magical and otherworldly. And all of the collections that Burning Eye publish have the most gorgeous covers. This one's pretty simplistic but I think it's still gorgeous. Next up I have a Real Grown Up Women by Samantha Borer. Buying this one was a no brainer for me. I mean, the words vagina and clitoris are in bold on the back, so. This is a poetry collection about what it's like to be a 20 something young woman. It's about dating, it's about um, social interaction, it is about women's relationships with their bodies. It's a book about sex, and I already know this is a collection that I'm gonna love. Next up, I have A Jam is for Girls, Girls Get Jam by Shagufta K. Iqbal. This is the poet's debut collection and I already have very high hopes for it. It sounds absolutely brilliant and it sounds like a really important book as well. This is a book about the immigrant experience and about Islamophobia. Apparently this isn't a collection about like conflicting identities when you are an immigrant, but it is about how that immigrant identity is a valid identity in itself. So I'm really looking forward to this one as well. I should also mention that not only do Burning Eye books have beautiful covers, but a lot of them have this like really rubbery feeling to them. Rubbery doesn't sound like a pleasant word. It's like this matte, buttery feeling to them. And I love them. They're fantastically published. Still with Burning Eye books, I have a Requiet by Malika Kigade. And on the back it says, this is a love letter to the testament of humanity and the patchwork of people that make up our lives. And the poet describes herself as having grown up reluctantly, the most exotic girl in a small Devon town. Again, I think this is a collection that explores difference and racial identity and gender and inequality. Another really important one, I think. And the final book I have from Burning Eye Books is All the Journeys I Never Took by Rebecca Tantony. All the Journeys I Never Took offers a personal account of what it's like to leave behind the middleman, lover, father, priest, and discover our place in the world. A place which echoes with unraveling journeys, first dates, breakups, family, and confidences. At turns both confessional and political, this collection explores what a contemporary definition of home might be. Something physical, a person, a concept best left behind, or a destination to keep heading towards. Doesn't that just sound brilliant? So yeah, Burning Eye Books is a publisher's that I can highly, highly recommend. I'm also gonna quickly talk about some of the eARCs poetry collections that I have received recently. The first of those is The Witch Doesn't Burn in This One by Amanda Lovelace. I've already read this one and reviewed it and I'll leave my wrap up linked down below. But this is a follow up to The Princess Saves Herself in this one. I also have Still Can't Do My Daughter's Hair by William Evans. You may be familiar with this poet as a performance poet. He does a lot with button poetry. And this is an exploration of masculinity, fatherhood, family, and what it is like to be a black man in contemporary America. I also have Women of Resistance, which is a poetry anthology made up of 41 different poets. Some are new poets, some are poetry veterans, all from different walks of life and with different experiences. It's all about gender, sexual identity, and race. And all of these poems explore inequality in our society. 
And finally, I have Najwa Zebian's poetry collection, Mind Platter. This poet is originally from Lebanon and she moved to Canada when she was 16. And I believe this collection has a lot to do with that experience and the challenges that she has faced because of those experiences and how she has overcome those challenges. This is quite a long poetry collection as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's like. So they are all the poetry collections that I'm going to tell you about today. Hopefully I will read some of these in the next month or so and it will kickstart me back into writing poetry as well as helping me learn about some experiences that are different to my own. Let me know if you are interested in any of these collections down below and we can have a little chat about them. And have you read any poetry collections recently that you have loved? I hope you're having a brilliant day and I will talk to you guys in my next video.